We want to thank everyone for the incredible response to our video on RGB and the Frame Meister. If you haven't watched that yet, you might want to check it out first. We go over how to get RGB video quality out of your retro consoles and how to use video scalers to get the best possible image when using authentic gaming hardware. A lot of interesting discussion has come out of this video, and there were also a lot of questions about how we have all of this hooked up. So, the purpose of this episode is to give you some ideas for hooking up all of your consoles, both retro and modern, to the same HDTV, and getting excellent quality out of all of them. In our previous RGB video, RGB 101 if you will, there was one major oversight that we have to apologize for. We showed this small RGB port on the front of the Frame Meister that looks sort of like an S-Video port, and some people were confused as to how we ultimately get the RGB images to our HDTVs and capture cards. I mean, I guess it's pretty obvious that the SCART cables we use for RGB aren't gonna fit in there. Well, to clarify, we use this adapter, which we both bought from Retro Console Accessories on eBay. So, in the most basic configuration, a SCART cable goes into the console's normal AV output, into the adapter, and then into the Frame Meister, which processes the image and sends it out to your HDTV via HDMI, resulting in a far superior image than you would ever hope to get by simply plugging your retro consoles directly into the HDTV. In my case, my RGB modded Famicom, the Super Nintendo, RGB modded N64, PlayStation 2, and Sega Genesis all have SCART cables connected, which then lay next to the adapter going into the Frame Meister, and I simply swap cables as needed. Unfortunately, SCART switch boxes are a bit of a more complicated matter than other switchers. They can be pretty expensive and difficult to find, even online, and we just haven't found one yet that we're satisfied with. It's worth noting that swapping SCART cables while your systems are powered on is not recommended due to the voltage levels that SCART carries, potentially damaging your equipment. I have done this without really thinking about it, and nothing has happened yet, but I try to be good about it. It's a bit of a hassle not having a switcher, and if we ever find a solution that works for us, we'll be sure to let you know. Right now, GameCube is the only system that I'm using component cables with, so it's just plugged directly into the D-Terminal component adapter that we showed you in the RGB video. I do have a component switch box if I ever need one again, and those aren't too hard to find. The NES is just plugged directly into the FrameMeister's composite inputs on the front, but I don't use it that much anymore since I adapt the carts to play on my Famicom instead. The PS1 and Wii are just for show right now since I currently play those games on the PS2 and Wii U. And of course, I use HDMI cables with the HD systems. Since my surround sound receiver is a little bit older, it can't handle HDMI audio, so the PS3 and PS4 have fiber optic cables running to the receiver so I can get proper surround sound out of them. Since the retro systems carry audio over SCART or RCA to the Frame Meister, they ultimately end up as HDMI as well, so I get the audio from those systems as well as the Wii U from the optical audio output on my TV. I also use the analog audio output from the TV to get audio from all systems to my mixer for streaming purposes. But enough about all that for this episode. Most of you probably just care about getting all of this stuff to your TV and capture card. I keep my setup streamlined by using an HDMI switcher in conjunction with two HDMI splitters. The Monoprice HDMI switcher has four inputs, 
I use these for the FrameMeister, Wii U, PS3, and PS4. The output goes to an HDMI splitter that sends the signal both directly to the TV as well as to the FrameMeister. Yeah, the FrameMeister actually has two HDMI inputs. Kind of weird, right? Well, it's handy because it lets me run the HD systems through the FrameMeister for the purpose of video capture. So I output 1080p from the FrameMeister to a second HDMI splitter. One cable going to the HDMI switcher, which ultimately sends it to my TV, of course, and the other going straight to my capture card. This means I don't have to swap any cables on the capture card for any console, and I don't have to change any recording settings because even if I'm playing a 720p PS3 game, the FrameMeister is sending it to my capture card as 1080p, but I'd rather not play my PS3 games with the FrameMeister processing them, so that's why I have them also go straight to the TV. And uh, by the way, we were pleasantly surprised to discover that our HDMI splitters strip the copy protection that is always in the PS3's HDMI output, so that's why we don't have to use component cables to capture PS3 video. Now, Corey is not only dealing with more systems than I am, but he's also currently working in a much smaller space. So let's take a look at what he's got going on. You know, I do have a lot less room to work with than Tri does, and I'm kind of envious. But you know, I lived in New York City for 10 years, so I'm used to dealing with just a teeny little bit of space to work with. Which at the time meant that I would just pull out my systems one by one and plug them into the FrameMeister as I needed them. But now that I moved with my family to a new location, I have more space. But not a whole lot more. So come on, let's take a look. As you can see here, I have a very vertical setup. Now this serves two purposes. One is to get as many systems in as small of a space as possible, and two, keep it out of reach of my two-year-old daughter. I keep my FrameMeister at the base of the tower. With my desktop PC right next to it, it makes it very easy to switch my inputs as needed. Anyways, let's start from the top. Up here I have the Sega Saturn hooked up via SCART, and I have the Genesis and Sega CD hooked up via SCART as well. See, I need all this extra space on top in case I want to add a 32X and a Game Genie and whatever else, and a power base converter. All this space is necessary. Right here, I've got my Nintendo level. I've got my GameCube and Game Boy Player outputting via S-Video. Component cables for the GameCube are really super expensive right now, and I managed to miss the boat on those completely, so I haven't gotten them. Next to it, I have my NES, which has been RGB modded and is hooked up via SCART. Next to that, I have my one-chip SNES that is hooked up via SCART as well. These two actually use the same cable, but it's a hassle to get behind and switch everything. Going down one more, we have the PlayStation level. Over here, I have a PS4 hooked up via HDMI, a PS3 HDMI as well, Going down one more, I have an Xbox 360 hooked up via HDMI, a Wii U hooked up via HDMI, of course. Going down to the bottom shelf, I have an Xbox One hooked up via HDMI. Who would have thought? Next to that, I have the PlayStation 2 hooked up via component. And just below that, I have my newest addition to my console family, my NEC PC Engine Duo R, which is region modded and RGB modded. It's a great system, I really love it. But damn, the games are expensive. <sighs> Underneath, I have some of my lesser used systems hooked up, like my Sega Dreamcast over here, which is hooked up via S-Video. Next to it is an original Xbox, which I got at Goodwill for like 15 bucks. It's hooked up via component. And on top of it is an N64 hooked up with S-Video. I would like to get it modded for RGB pretty soon though. So now that you've seen everything I have to contend with, let's see how it all works out. The FrameMeister is my main hub. If I'm playing a game, it has to be on. That's the big difference between tries and my setup. This is a component switcher. This switches the original Xbox and PS2, which goes out component into the D terminal on the back of the FrameMeister.
This one right here connects S-Video and Composite. To this one I have connected the GameCube, N64, and Dreamcast. This splits all three of those systems into the S-Video input on the front of the FrameMeister. And of course an HDMI switcher so I can connect all of my HD systems down to one input that goes into the back of the FrameMeister. And finally, my Saturn, Genesis, NES, Super NES, and PC Engine going into the SCART to Mini DIN adapter in the front of the FrameMeister. I can't wait until we finally find a SCART switcher to suit our needs. This is starting to get old. So as you can see, every single one of these consoles goes into the FrameMeister. From there, I have a single HDMI cable going out of the FrameMeister into this splitter. And out of this splitter, one HDMI cable goes to my Avermedia ExtremeCap U3, and the other one goes to my television. So what does this all add up to? Well, it means I can capture footage from any of these consoles over here onto my editing workstation with about 30 seconds of prep. And then I can play games on the big screen TV over there while sitting on this piece of crap couch. Well, we hope this has clarified most of your questions about how to get RGB from your retro consoles to your HD TV. And maybe it's given you some ideas of how to consolidate your retro and HD consoles into a single setup. In addition to our regular game focus videos, also keep an eye out for a series where we examine specific consoles in depth and go over all the options you have for getting the best picture to your TV. But for now, if you have any more questions, feel free to ask us in the comments. Thanks for watching. All have SCART cables connected. SCART cables.